What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack of hack series today We are opening up a pack of scorch not something that we get to open very often So I'm very excited to see this. Uh, this is from 2003, which is weird to think uh, that's Getting on 15 years ago, so that's pretty awesome. I'm very very excited to open it uh, Of course, we're gonna look at this from a pack one pick one perspective So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our actual pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set um, I will go ahead and say I did not play during this set. I have no clue what the good cards are, but I'm going to do the best I can. So our first card here is Dragon Breath, a very classic card. It's an enchant creature. The creature has haste. Uh, also, this costs one and a red, I should say. Uh, but fire breathing is kind of the ability here. Enchant creature gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, when, the, when a creature with a converted mana cost six or more comes into play, you may return Dragon Dragon Breath, excuse me, from your graveyard to play, enchanting that creature. Uh, this is a really interesting enchant creature. Normally, I hate enchant creatures. A card like this, I really like. Uh, it actually has some reoccurring value. Uh, it's a very, very efficient way of buffing your creature and giving it haste. So if you can get this into your graveyard and then just start playing some bombs, it seems really, really sweet. That being said, in a red deck, it's going to be a little bit trickier because ideally you want the low cost curve. A card like this. Uh, may not trigger on that, that last ability very often, but I do actually really like this card. I think for once, uh, I found an enchant creature I like. So uh, the next card here is Wipe Clean. It's an instant for one and a white. Remove target enchantment from the game. And also a cycling three. Uh, so you can pay three, discard it, and draw a card. Uh, I actually like this. Normally I do not, uh, I will go ahead and say, but cycling gives cards like this a second use which means that it's actually okay if you run this and don't have an actual enchantment target. Uh, doesn't really matter, you can just cycle this away if you don't have a use for it. And it still furthers your game plan, you're still drawing a card, you're drawing into more things. So, I uh, actually like this, not more than Dragon Breath, but I do like it. Uh, uncontrolled Infestation, so it's one and a red for an enchant land. Uh, <laughs> it can enchant only a non-basic land, uh, and when the land becomes tapped, you destroy it. Uh, pretty straightforward land destruction in a really roundabout way. Don't like it at all. Uh, definitely not a card I would play in limited. Not really much to say about that. Uh, Dragon Fangs uh, is it an enchant creature as well for one and a green. The, the creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. And this also uh, has the same ability that Dragon Breath does, where you can kind of return it and enchant a creature if it costs six or more if it's in the graveyard. Uh, I don't like this one more than Dragon Breath for sure. It's going to be easier to trigger in red, obviously, because you are going to have more big swinging, you know, CMC high costing cards, whatever. But uh, I definitely like Dragon Breath better. I think it's a more powerful card for sure. Uh, Death Death's Head Buzzard uh, is a 2 1 for 1 and 2 black. It does have flying, and when it's put into the graveyard from play, all creatures get minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. I actually do kind of like this card. Uh, this is one that uh, we've actually seen reprints of, I believe, somewhat recently. Uh, and a 2-1 for 3 on the flying end of things is actually okay. It's not amazing, obviously. you'd like it, It's going to die pretty easily is the, the downside here. But uh, it takes a lot of creatures with it. Uh, early game, this is probably going to deal with one or two other creatures on the opponent's side, hopefully. Uh, and so for that reason, I actually like it quite a lot. Uh, probably... So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably more than Dragon's Breath, uh, if I'm going to be honest. Oh gosh, this is an interesting card. Uh, Scornful Egotist is a 1-1 one, one for 8 mana. Why does this cost 8 mana? Uh, you can morph it for 1 blue, so you can play it face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for 3. Uh, so, basically it's a 3 mana 2-2 two, two that you can turn into a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. Or you can just play for 8 mana, which seems terrible. By all accounts, this card is garbage. There's literally no reason for this card. Uh, this, the art's really cool, I guess. Uh, well done there, Jim. Love it. Uh, really hate that card though. Uh, Dispersal Shield, one of blue for an instant counter target spell if its converted mana cost is less than or equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control. This is so specific. Uh, I don't really like this. I'm sure it's okay as a counter, but like, that just seems so excessive. I'd much rather have a Death's Head Buzzard than this. So, not a fan of that card. Uh, ooh, here we go. So, Torrent of Fire, 3 and 2 red. Deals damage equal to the highest converted mana cost among permanents you control to target creature or player. 
I kind of like that. So, okay, this is a really good spell. Uh, it's going to be dealing probably three, maybe four damage uh, by turn five, which is probably when you're going to be playing this, uh, which means that's a pretty good chunk of damage. It's probably going to take out a pretty high powered creature or maybe if you're in a red deck, just kind of finish out the game. Uh, this is a game ender. This is kind of a built in win condition. So I do really like this. Uh, definitely a card I would like uh, in any deck, really any red deck. Uh, Avon Liberator is two and two white for a two three with flying. It also has more for three and a white. Uh, again, you can play it face down for three of any color and then flip it face up for three and a white. Uh, when it is turned face up, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting card. It definitely is uh, a pretty powerful one. In fact, I definitely would play this. I don't like it more than Torrent of Flame uh, of Fire. Excuse me. Uh, but this is definitely a really, really good card in like a blue-white flyer strategy, something like that. Uh, Lingering Death is one and a black for another enchant creature. Uh, the controller of the enchanted creature sacrifices it at the end of his or her turn. So this is a really interesting one. It's like a kill spell, but it's like delayed, <laughs> uh, which seems really weird to me. Uh, but it is a kill spell, I will say. I don't like it more than Torn of Fire, if I'm going to be honest, though, but it is interesting. Uh, Sprouting Vines is an instant for two and a green. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, this also features Storm. Uh, this is a really interesting card to feature Storm, but uh, basically you copy this for every spell that's been played the turn that this is played. So if you played three other things that turn, you get four effects uh, of Sprouting Vines. You get the initial and then you copy it three times for all the other spells. So you get four uh, activations in that instance. Um, don't like this card really at all. Uh, it's only good if you're in five color jank, maybe. Um, just seems really bad, so not for me. Uh, our first uncommon is Blade Wings Thrall. It's two and two black for a three three. It has flying as long as you control a dragon. And when a dragon comes into play, you may return it from your graveyard to play. Uh, now dragons are pretty popular, I believe, in this set. I might be a little wrong on that. I'd rather have the dragon first. Uh, a three three for four is bad a 3-3 three, three flying uh for four is great uh and one that can recur itself so i'd rather have the dragons first but this does seem really really good and like a red black kind of dragon strategy uh wind wing shard excuse me is one and two white target player sacrifices an attacking creature and also has storm it is an instant uh, this is really interesting as well. Uh, generally speaking, if you're playing this on your opponent's turn, you're kind of reliant on them having played a number of spells first. And if any self-respecting player knows, uh, you generally wait as long as possible in your turn to play the spells that you need to play. So uh, if you can get away with playing things second main, it conceals excuse me, a little more information uh, than if you do it first main. And so you may only get one activation out of this, and that I don't really like. Uh, I'm sure it's kind of okay, but uh, it just doesn't seem great to me. Uh, hunting pack uh, is five and two green for an instant. Put a four four green beast token into play, and this also has storm, uh, so you do get to copy it for other spells that turn. This is a little interesting. Uh, I don't know if this is a good card, uh, only because. Like, how many activations do you need to make this worth it? Is it just two? If it's two, then yeah, I definitely want it. If it's three, that's a little more tricky. Uh, but I actually kind of would speculate on this and probably pick it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yeah, I would take this so far. But we do have the Eternal Dragon. It's a 5-5 five, five for five and two white. It, had, it does have flying. Uh, and you can pay three and two white and return it from your graveyard to your hand. You can only play this ability during your upkeep. It also has plane cycling, which means you can pay to discard it, search your library for a planes card, reveal it and put it into your hand. You then shuffle your deck. That just seems like a better card to me. Uh, Eternal Dragon is really, really good. It's able to recur itself, which is fantastic. Uh, and it is just a big flying bomb. Uh, so for me, that is a pretty clear pick. Uh, feel free to disagree in the comment section below as always. But uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. If you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe, stay up to date on all of our awesome content, turn that little notification bell on, that way you'll get notified anytime we put out videos, which is five times a week, just saying. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.